Good afternoon, everybody. Today is Thursday, May the 6th. It is approximately 1.02. Sorry about that short taping yesterday or the day before yesterday. It's unintentional. Let's start off with the sound saying. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That is part of the... Beatitudes, Matthew 5, 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And what will be next? Blessed are those that moan, for they should be comforted. Part of the uh, Beatitudes. The back is coming from Isaiah 43, 2b. And it says, when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Amen. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. And that is true. You can walk, you know, fire don't always have to be flame. Fire can also be a situation that you are walking through, whether it be sickness, trouble, whatever it is. Yeah, when you walk through it, you will not be harmed. That's what it says. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. That means you will not be harmed. Whatever it is that you're walking through, you will walk out of it. All right? Because the grace and mercy of God is upon thee. Huh? Okay. And oftentimes, God uses these moments to show off. And we love it when God shows off. All right? All right, today I'm not going to give you any key words, only because I like to read from the book of Lamentations, and because I have not read from this book that often, I think it's appropriate that I should give you an introduction into the book of Lamentations. The introduction is never really that long. It just gives you an idea of what the book is about. And uh, it's a good prerequisite before the actual reading so you all understand uh, why the words uh, uh, associated with the introduction, okay? Um, this, the author is, is Jeremiah. Dates written between 586 and 585 B.C. before Christ. This certain uncertain period of time soon after the destruction of Jerusalem at the beginning of the exile. So you will understand why Jeremiah is sorrowful in the reading that we are about to read. Okay, the book takes its name from its con content, poetic laments about the destruction of Jerusalem. It is also called the Lamination of Jeremiah. Background, Lamination, uh, a look at the past is a sequel to the book of Jeremiah, A Look Towards the Future. Both books center around the destruction of Jerusalem and her subsequent captivity. Lamentations is one of five books which make up the malignant. These books of the malignant are read publicly at the following Jewish festivals, uh, Ninth of Abba, Lamentations, Purim, Easter, Pentecost, Ruth, Tabernacle, Ecclesiastic, and Passover, Songs of Solomon. The first four poems of Laminations are uh, five poem songs are in acrostic or alphabetic fashion. The 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet correspond successfully to the first letters of each verse in chapters 1, 2, and 4. However, in chapter 3, each letter is allocated three verses. Uh, where written Jerusalem or Egypt, to whom to the fallen city of Jerusalem, the contents of lamination. Uh, King Nebuchadnezzar brings to pass that which Jeremiah has been prophesying for 40 years. Jeremiah, uh, Jerusalem is destroyed indeed, as is the temple, and the people are exiled to Babylon. Uh, now Jeremiah sits among the ashes and weeps. His anguish is not only for himself, but 
for the exile and those left behind destitute. These five poems make up a funeral song for the death of Jerusalem. But even during these barren hours in Jer Jeremiah's constrict heart, he has a glimmer of hope. He begins again to pray for mercy on his people. Jeremiah praises God for his power, his fairness, his faithfulness. He looks to God for the future restoration of Jerusalem. Okay, wrath. Uh, key words in the book of Lamination is wrath. So this reading uh, today, you will read a lot of wrath. Uh, uh, you will see it, you will hear it. Uh, uh, wrath in action, in play. Okay, uh, wrath, Lamin, the wrath of God has crushed Jer Jerusalem and vindicated his righteousness and justice. All Jeremiah can do now is lament over what was once his proud and glorious city. Yes, all he can do is cry about it now, okay, because it has been done. And in the same way that God is fair, he is faithful, he is all-powerful, okay, he is also merciful and, and is full of compassion. No matter what he does, he is full of compassion, okay. Um, so, in the themes, which are PowerPoints, which is the tail end of any introduction, and it says here, the suffering we experience may at times be a direct result of the sin in our lives. Yes, yes, either uh, the sin in your lives individually or the sin in our lives collectively as a nation, as a generation, okay? Uh, suffering may be allocated in our lives as a mean of helping us to repent. Yes, Lord. Uh, he does use suffering and his wrath as a mean to draw us back unto him. Okay. Uh, a forgiven sin may still have consequences with which we must deal. Yes, uh, God may forgive us for, for our sins, and he does forgive us for our sins, but we will still pay the consequences for the actions that we committed. In the story of Jacob and his brother, uh, yes, he did cheat his brother out of his birthright, and yes, God did favor him over his brother, but yes, he did pay the consequences for what he did to his brother through his father-in-law. Uh, he thought he was marrying the woman of his choice, and when he woke up the next morning, he woke up with Leah. Okay, so he did get that which he had dosed it to his brother. Okay, and like I said to you all the time, we what? We what we sow. It's like gravity. It comes whether you like it or not. Okay, so sow that which is good, and good will return unto thee. All right? Uh, during our darkest hours, God will strengthen and comfort us if we will only let him. Yes, we must let him. And how do we let God comfort us? We believe. You must be a believer. You must trust in him wholeheartedly. And then he shall come for you. Okay? Uh, if we have ever experienced sorrow, we are great candidates to console another who is hurting now. Yes. Okay? A person who has not experienced any sorrow cannot be of any help to you if you are in grief. Okay, a person who is acquainted with grief and sorrow is a better counselor for you. Okay, um, just like you you can't you can't speak to a person who doesn't know what it is to lose anything, lose your home, lose your child, lose your spouse. You can't you 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 you, you can't get much out of anybody who has not experienced these things but someone who has gone through these losses can be a great counselor unto thee all right it says during our darkest hours god will strengthen and comfort us if we will only let him okay and if we ever experience sorrow 
we are great candidates to console another who is hurting now. Okay, the uh, next one is, even as Jeremiah moans, our father moans, when we refuse to take the message of his son to heart. Yes, God does not like to punish us. He does not do it willingly. <clears throat> he do it as a necessity, and it does bother him to have to discomfort the children of men. It bothers him. He does not like doing it. Okay, but sometimes... Um, Top love is exactly what we need, okay? And the judgment of God is what? Certain the time it will arrive is not. So judgment is coming our way. When it will arrive, we have no say in that, okay? So if you think this pandemic is discomforting to you, there's more coming. There will be even more uh, unbelievable and more disturbing all right so that's why we are reading from this book today all right so if he can correct those in the biblical time for the sins that they commit against god he will certainly deal with any other generation that does the same all right so this is a very long reading it has <coughs> Excuse me. It has 66 verses to it. We have a lot of black for sin. We have sporadic orange for your faith. <coughs> Excuse me. We have some purple here for God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We have pink for witnessing. We have some green for love. And we have a significant amount of orange for your faith. But because the the reading is so long, I will only do half of it today and uh, the remaining half tomorrow if I live and nothing happens. Uh, as we all know, tomorrow is not promised to any of us. <clears throat> I will be reading from the New International Bible just to be sure that these words are understood. Okay, uh, I will not be flipping back and forth unless the Spirit leads me to. Let's begin. Verse 1 to verse 7 is black for sin. And in here, it doesn't have a subtitle. <clears throat> Excuse me. A little water should clear my throat. Uh, in, in this particular uh, colorful Bible, it says Jeremiah cries to God for mercy. Yes, he does cry to God for, for mercy because when uh, J Jerusalem is taken under captivity, there are very few the people left in, in Jerusalem. And he is among the few that are left in Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is left destitute literally destitute fire burning everywhere the stones have been broken down the temple has been destroyed the place looks a total disaster okay it, ha it looks like God has walked through it and left a mess behind him and the same walk he will walk through this earth and will leave the same mess behind him and that is the time when we will all bow to our knees in mercy and in, in prayer to God to help us okay because the pandemic apparently was not enough okay so let's read the first seven verses which are black I am the man who has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath his would be God God's wrath, okay? I am the man who has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. Two, he has driven me away and made me walk in the darkness rather than light. Three, indeed he has turned his hand against me again and again all day long. Four, he has made my skin and my flesh grow old and has broken my bones. He has besieged me and has surrounded me with bitterness and hardship. Six, 
He has made me dwell in darkness like those long dead. 7. He has walled me in so I cannot escape. He has weighed me down with chains. Okay. And uh, here in verse 7 says, He has hinged me about that I cannot go out. He has made He has made my chains heavy. Okay, verse 8 is orange for your faith. Even when I call out or cry for help, he shuts out my prayer. Okay, and then we're back to black from 9 to 20. He has barred my way with blocks of stone. He has made my path crooked. Mm, 10. Like a bear lying in wait, like a lion in hiding. 11. He dragged me from the path and mangled me with and left me without help. He dragged me from the path and mangled me and left me without help. Uh, 12. He drew his bow and made me the target of his song. Of his arrows, thirteen. He perch, he pierced my heart with arrows from his quiver, fourteen. I've become the laughing stock of all my people. They mock me in song all day long, fifteen. He has filled me with bitter herbs and satted me with gall, sixteen. He has broken my teeth with gravel. He has trampled me in the dust, 17. I have been deprived of peace. Uh, I have forgotten what prosperity is, uh, 17. Here it reads, From thou hast removed my soul far off from peace. I forgot prosperity, okay. Um, 18. So I say, my splendor is gone and all that I have hoped from the Lord. 19. I remember my affliction and my wondering, at the bitterness and the gold. 20. I will remember them and my soul is downcast within me. 21. Is orange for your faith. Yet, this I call to mind and therefore I have hope. Amen. 22. Uh, and 23 is purple for the Trinity. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassion never fails. And I like the way it reads here in uh, um, the rainbow, the colorful Bible. It says, it is, I'll start from 21. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. 22. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassion fell us not. And this is why he has not totally consumed us. Because his passion is great. It is great. Okay? And it fails not. Unlike the compassion of man, which is about the size of one, one gravel of sand. From the sea or the beaches if you could just get one gravel that's the amount of compassion man has for man okay it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassion faileth not 23 they are new every morning great in thy faith is thy faithfulness and yes God's faithfulness towards us is always greater than the faithfulness we have towards each other. Did you hear me? God's faithfulness towards us is always greater than the faithfulness we show each other. Alright, 23. I'll read 21 from here. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. 22. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassion never fail. 23, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Amen. 24 and 20 to 26 is orange for your faith. And I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him despite his situation, despite the desolation that he has, God has left behind. The man still has hope and he still waits upon the Lord. Amen. They are new every morning. New batch of grace upon your head is new every morning.
Okay, great is your faithfulness. 24, I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. Amen. 25, the Lord is good to those whose hope is in him. Amen. To the one who seeks him. Amen. 26, it is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Uh, you know, after you have done all that you can do, the next thing for you to do is just to stand still and see the mighty hand of God working in your situation. Let's read it how it says here. Here, verse 26 says, It is good that a man shall both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Quietly, that means just stand still and say nothing. And maintain your hope with all confidence. Okay, it don't make no difference what the doctors say. It don't make no difference what the, what, what the situation looks like. How dire it may be. For your, your God, our God, is greater than any problem we could experience on earth. Greater than any problem at all. Okay. Um, 26. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. 27. It is good for a man to bear the yoke while he is young. That was yellow for family. And here it says it is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. 28 to 30 is uh, orange for your faith. Let him sit alone in silence, for the Lord has laid it on him. Amen. 29. Let him bury his face in the dust. Uh, there be yet, there may yet be hope. That's right. Bury your face in the dust and keep quiet and patient and prayerful and hopeful. And confident in not your abilities, not man's abilities, not the doctor's abilities, but in God's great unlimited abilities. Okay, let me speak to somebody today. Let me be talking to somebody today. Okay, no matter what it is that's going on in your life, God is able. He is able to undo it. He is able to turn it around. He is able to make it a miracle. All you have to do is believe and trust in him wholeheartedly and watch him as he works on your behalf. So that you may do what? Glorify him. Because that's what we were created to praise and glorify God. Okay? 29, let him bury his face in the dust. There may yet he be hope. There may yet be hope. Always be hopeful. No matter what the situation may look like. Always maintain your hope. Okay? And the faith, even as small as a mustard seed, is more useful to you than no faith at all. Let me repeat that. Faith as small as a mustard seed is more useful to you than having no faith at all. Okay, 30. Let him offer his cheek to one who will strike him and let him be filled with disgrace. 31. For men are not cast off by the Lord forever. Though he brings grief, he will show compassion. So great is his unfailing love. I love the way it reads here. 31, it says, for the Lord will not cast off forever. 32, but though he cause grief, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. Okay, multitude, that means his grace and his mercy is abundantly big. Plenteous in both, grace and mercy. Okay, and if God can have such grace and mercy towards us, we ought to be delivering this same grace and mercy towards each other. Are you hearing me this morning? Though he brings grief, 
He will show compassion so great is his unfailing love. 33. For he does not willingly bring affliction or grief to the children of men. He does not like to do this. Remember I used to, I said to you before. Before I would spank my children, I would always say to them, this hurts me more than it will hurt you. And it does. Because we really don't want to go there with our children. But to spare the rod means we don't love them. It doesn't mean that you have to use that rod every day, but there are times when the rod is appropriate. And there are times when the wrath of God is appropriate and justified. 34, to crush underfoot all prisoners in the land. 30, 34, I'm sorry. To crush underfoot all prisoners in the land. 25, to deny a man his rights before the Most High. 36, to deprive a man of justice. Would not the Lord see such things? He sees all things. Even the unjust things that are done in this world, he sees it. And we pay the price for it. There is nothing more unjust than for a free, innocent man to be jailed for something he has not do. That is grossly unjust. And this is happening every day. The prison is full of innocent men and women. Okay. Who usually do 10 to 15, 20 years. And they, they throw a man in prison like this. But takes forever. Even though they discover that the man is or the woman is innocent. It takes forever to open that door and let them free. That is unjustifiable. Period. Uh, let me do the last two on this page. I'll repeat 36. To deprive a man of justice, would not the Lord see such things? Let me see how it reads here. 36. And 31 to 38 is purple for the Trinity. To turn aside the right of a man before the face of the Most High. To sub subvert a man in his case, the Lord approveth not. 37. Who is he that saith, and it cometh to pass when the Lord commandeth it not. Who is he that's saying the things that God saith, God saith this, and God saith that, but God has not commanded it? Who is he that does this? Okay, let me continue from here. 36. Thirty six it says to deprive a man of justice would not the Lord see such things here it says to subvert a man in his case the Lord approveth not. Okay, thirty seven. Who can speak and have it happen if the Lord has not decreed it? Who? No one. No one. That's why you ought to be careful. When you are, when you use the word, thus said the Lord. You ought to be extremely careful. Because if the Lord has not said it, he will hold you guilty for it. There is no exception to that rule. None. Who can speak and have it happen if the Lord has not decreed it? No one. Okay. At 38, it is not from the mouth of the Most High that both calamities and good things come. It is not from the mouth of the Most High that both calamities and good things come. And let's read it from here. Out of the mouth of the Most High proceedeth not evil and good. I'll repeat it from one more time. It is not from the mouth of the Most High that both calamity and good things come. Okay, we stopped at 38. And we will continue the remaining verses tomorrow. Thank you so very much for listening to uh, our reading today. I hope that you are uh, reading beside me or at least join me.
Uh, in the meantime, may the peace of God be upon you. May the protection of God surround you. May the will of God be manifested through you and through this earth. Because it is not our earth. It's not our world. We are just temporary pilgrimage here. This world will always belong to God. And it is our duty to live our lives on this earth in righteousness. Okay, in righteousness. It is not our job to pollute this world as we are doing. And in the same way that God dealt with the sins of the biblical people or generation, he will surely, without doubt, deal with the sins of this current generation. So please, be among the ones that harm does not come nigh thee. Let me repeat that. Please be among the ones that harm does not come nigh thee. Because my father knows his people. He knows every life on earth, whether it's man or beast. And when he does things, he does not allow it to harm those that truly believe in him. Have a wonderful day. And I love you, but God loves you more.